Post-electromagnetic field therapy, also known as PEMF therapy, promises pain relief. But what does the science actually say about its effectiveness? Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. I'm a sports medicine physician practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I help a lot of patients manage chronic pain, joint issues, and musculoskeletal injuries using the latest evidence-based research. I get a lot of great questions in my video comments, so this Q&A series is meant to break down your top questions with clear science-backed answers. As always, these are actual questions from my viewers, so if there's another topic you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments. What is PEMP? I'm wondering if you could research the use of pulsed electromagnetic fields. Okay, so let's first answer the question, what is PEMF? Pulsed electromagnetic field therapy is a non-invasive treatment that uses low-frequency electromagnetic pulses to stimulate tissue repair and alleviate pain. The therapy works by generating electromagnetic fields that influence the electrical charge and ion movement within cells, and this can enhance cellular processes like protein synthesis, collagen production, and cell proliferation. All of this leads to improved circulation, reduced inflammation, and faster tissue healing, particularly in areas with poor blood flow such as joints and tendons. PEMF is commonly used for conditions like osteoarthritis, chronic pain, tendon injuries, and bone healing. It's a drug-free, low-risk therapy that supports the body's natural healing processes without invasive procedures. And over the past few decades, PEMF has gained attention for its potential to manage pain and accelerate recovery in musculoskeletal conditions, though its effectiveness can vary depending on the specific condition and treatment parameters. So now let's take a look at what the clinical trials actually say. This first study is a 2024 systematic review that examined the effectiveness of PEMF therapy for pain related to osteoarthritis, focusing primarily on knee arthritis. The review included 17 studies and found that PEMF therapy improved pain scores on the VAS scale by about 60% and WOMAX scores by approximately 40%. While the researchers concluded that PEMF shows promising results, they also noted that variability in treatment duration and device types still need further investigation. Another study examined PEMF therapy for shoulder pain, specifically in patients with subacromial impingement syndrome. Participants were randomly assigned to either PEMF therapy plus exercise or sham PEMF therapy plus exercise. The results showed that the group receiving actual PEMF therapy experienced greater improvements in pain, range of motion, functionality, and quality of life at both the first and third month follow-ups. However, not all studies have found positive results. For instance, one study examined the effects of PEMF therapy for rotator cuff tendon tears, another common cause of shoulder pain. This study compared a combination of PEMF therapy and exercise with sham PEMF plus exercise. The results revealed that the addition of PEMF therapy to conventional physical therapy did not provide any superior benefits compared to exercise alone. Similarly, a study on knee osteoarthritis compared PEMF therapy combined with exercise to exercise alone. In this case, the researchers found that progressive resistance exercise was just as effective as PEMP therapy plus exercise in terms of reducing pain and improving function in patients with knee arthritis. Given the mixed results across these studies, it's clear that PEMP therapy shows promise, but it's not without its limitations. So in my opinion, while PEMP has potential, it's not a cure-all. Based on the available clinical evidence, the results are inconsistent and PEMF should not replace established therapies like physical therapy, medications, or injections. Some studies show significant benefits, but others suggest more limited effects. In my practice, I do recommend giving PEMF a try for patients who have access to it, but I always emphasize that it's not a magic solution. It can be a helpful tool in the pain management toolbox, but it should be combined with other treatments for the best outcome. If you're considering it, just be aware that the science is not conclusive yet, and there are likely more proven options available depending on your condition.